introduce our five distinguished guests with ex enormous insights and experience on China. Starting from my right-hand side, President and CEO of Asia Society, Kevin Rudd, who needs little introduction. He's a former Prime Minister of Australia, ending March, will be the Ambassador of Australia to US. A decade-long China expert, fluent Mandarin speaker, known to many Chinese as Lao Lu. <laughs> 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 but let me quickly start from Kevin. You first came to China in 1984. Yeah. And came to the country numerous times since. When was the last, well, when, now with the China's reopening, when do you think is your next trip to China? And a more serious note, what do you see a more open, vibrant Chinese economy mean to the world? Well, it's good to be back with our friends from Taishin, and it's great to have this forum here at Davos and all of our Chinese friends back again. And, uh, and uh, all I can say is after three years, China, we've missed you. And it's good to have you back. Uh, and uh, it's uh, good that we're in contact with each other again. Uh, it's been hard, as you know, to travel to China during that period. Yeah, I've been in and out of China 100, 150 times over the years. I've lived and worked there. And uh, I do love the place. <clears throat> but it's three years since I've been there. So your question is, when am I going back? Um, uh, maybe uh, before I take up uh, the new position in uh, Washington. That's it. Uh, uh, maybe next month. I've got to do uh, an Asia Society event in, uh, in Hong Kong. And so I may uh, flip up to Beijing. We'll see how that turns out. What does it all mean? I think... Um, None of us in the world have had an easy time with COVID. Nobody. That's just the truth. Um, and uh, everybody has struggled in particular with how to uh, handle this massively contagious variant called Omicron. Um, China launched back in 2015 its determination to become uh, self-sufficient in 10 critical technologies. That's the China 2025 plan. If you look carefully at the Central Economic Work Conference report of December last year, its aspirations for national self-sufficiency in semiconductors, in uh, quantum computing and artificial intelligence, it remains China's policy. So these measures by and large predated the American reactions which we've seen in recent times. I do not see, therefore, an ability to return the technology competition between the two states to a steady state until we resolve the underlying uh, geopolitical uh, stabilisation question. Otherwise, that competition will continue and it may go into new areas uh, such as quantum computing and artificial intelligence. In other words, there is a real risk that we will still face a high level of technological decoupling. 